So what's it feel like to open for Billy Gibbons? I mean, scary. Me. What's it feel like for Billy Gibbons to open for you? Oh, God, that's not what happened. <laughs> That's not That's what happened. That's exactly what happened. He went on first, but it was that was that was not what happened. Uh, Billy Gibbons, uh, his the Texas Blues in general, Stevie Ray and and Billy were kind of my guys, you know. And me too. Just something about it was just. I mean, and there's so many people playing guitar, and as a guitar player, I mean, you sort of pick your ponies, you know. And those guys were my ponies. Mm -hmm. I, I was, and Billy, the way his tone was always impeccable. Uh, his approach to what he did and the style therein, and, and it, guitar has been so proliferated through the, the music over the years. To, to be able to have your own thing on guitar is really special, and he has his thing, and I've always loved it, man. I was like shaking at the knees, and I got to tell you a cool story. Cause cool. I've been ever since I started in the bar bands, and I'm doing my thing, and I'm. You know, you, you play a lot of cover songs and you're trying to sell beer. And I, LaGrange was a song I've been covering forever. Mm -hmm. And so I know we get to do a finale with Billy and I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. And my stuff was got to be set up right next to his, which I was like, yes. <laughs> so we're all up there and I'm like, all right, what are we gonna do? And they said, we're gonna do Sharp Dress Man. I'm going, yeah, <laughs> I know that one. And so we're starting to learn it. And, and Wally, the producer comes up and he goes, Hey, fellas, that's not what we're doing. The, the girls are going to do that. We're do, the, this is going to be LaGrange. And I'm going, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know that one. <laughs> I know that one. Kick it off. And I'm standing right next to him, and he's standing right there. And he's running the band, you know, and he, he just goes, dun, 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 dun. and he kicks <laughs> it off right there. And I've just felt like a little kid in my bedroom again, <laughs> listening to ZZ Top. I had the time of my life. Yeah, it was yeah, fun. I know the feeling. When we did Crossroads with them, I just went down by myself and met with Billy and Dusty and Frank to talk about the music. And I had charted, done numbers charts on all our songs. And so that, and we knew all their stuff, you know? Yeah. And of course we had, I'm sure they knew. We I'm had sure knew guitar players in our band and I play guitar on a couple of things and wound up, I, I go, we got, a, we got too many six strings out there. <laughs> and I played harp most of that show, but it was really fun playing harp because I think yeah. I told you last night, Billy's a good harp player too. And so I had to kind of bring a little juice and, and it all worked out. But I, I meet with them and, and I said, well, you know, just let's figure out. And I, I mean, I didn't, had really never met them other than just in passing, waving at an award show a couple of times, like at the Billboard Awards. So... You know, this is like from scratch. And I'm like, so, you know, I've got all our songs charted out. If you guys just want to run through them, we can do that or whatever. And, and I hand this stack of George to Billy. And he starts to look, he looks at two or three of them. He goes, man, I can't read this. And it takes me about two months to learn a song. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? Billy, when you feel like playing, you just jump, jump in, in and we'll get out of the way. And beyond that, and and, uh, and we played That's with so two cool. bass players and two drummers. Wow. And and uh, and Frank and Dusty, they're like, hey, we got it, man. We we know your song's pretty good. If we don't, we won't get in the way. And I said, well, we know your stuff. I said, well, y'all want to run these things down? And, and they said, sure, you know, just to get it straight for me. And uh, so I've spent probably like you, the whole night before, just working on tone and trying to get something that I can play for the Reverend to where he doesn't just <laughs> look at me like I've got Bonk antlers coming it. out of my head. Yeah. And uh, and so, you know, I'm over there just making sure everything's plugged in. I've got my stuff and whatever. And, and same thing like you were talking about. Billy walks over, he plugs his guitar in. Oh my God, that's it, that's that sound. Yeah. Well, you were great, man, you did good. Thank Congratulations. You. And Thank you, Yeah, was you so lived much through fun. it. I lived through it. I know. <laughs> it is, you know, you just come out the other side of those things. Did I things, get shot? God, I'm, I'm is, still fighting, know? all right. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm still in the game, way to go. I'm glad you were there. That was fun having you there, too. Uh, it, was, it was a good night. So um, I got to ask you about El Paso. Yeah. How, of all the places, I know you said you wanted to 
get away, which I get, and you probably, I don't know if you mentioned Stones, but that's what I always think about, Exile on Main Street, or those records where people just camped out, you know, old rockers for weeks with stuff when they felt like it, it came to them or whatever. Yeah. But El Paso, I mean, why not the beach? Well, I, I told Marshall Altman, my producer, I said, man, we got to get better. We got to get better. If We can't do Sunshine and Whiskey Part 2 because that has no reason to come out. We got to mm -hmm. get better. I got to evolve. I got to refine. We have to refine what it is that I'm doing. And uh, the only way to do that is to get focused. And we just get everything else out of the way and go and zero in on this music. And man, well, I barely had cell phone service out there. All we could do, we just sat around for 10 days out there and just man, well, let's try this and let's try mess around with tone. It was just a five piece band. Mm -hmm. We cut a lot of it live and I knew that it would be more of a thing if we just got down to it. So primarily though, the reason we chose that was because of the Sonic Ranch and, and that experience. So I'm going to, I've got to just quiz you one more time though. Why Sonic Ranch? I mean, how'd you, who exposed you to that place? You know, um, it goes back to what we're talking about there with, that, Reed Shippen, uh, an engineer, who uh -huh. had been there, and he uh, he was telling me about it, and I went and looked at, at it, and I've always just really romanticized the Wild West. Mm -hmm. and the Texas blues thing has always been really important to me, mm -hmm. and, and those guys like Billy and Stevie Ray Vaughan, and something just very alluring about the desert and about being down on the border like that, and the southwestern flair of it all. I just really have always romanticized that. And I thought, man, this would be such a cool place to go. And yeah. you really can't get any further away. If you're trying to get away, <laughs> God, you can't get any further. So I, it just felt really right. And my spirit said, man, we, we got to go there. So boots, they boots. make boots down there. They sure do. They sure do. You and, and you cool know, boots. I want to talk about something else for a second. This yeah. is something I didn't even realize till I got there. Mm -hmm. Here we are on the border, and I'm I'm living, like, I, I, the I'm on the pinnacle of living my dream. I'm getting to try to do my sound and my thing, and I'm getting this opportunity and these musicians and this equipment and these songs, and I'm like, oh, yeah, man, and I'm being creative, and literally on the other side of this river. It's the opposite, and there's a lot of people who aren't living their dream. And just the juxtaposition of being there and going, man, I'm so blessed to be here and be able to do this, and, and the inspiration therein, you know. And I fell in love with the desert at night. I'm going out there, and the desert's coming alive, and I'm looking across the border, and I'm going, man, I'm so lucky. And I'm taking all that feeling and all that, those good vibes, and I'm, we're going into the studio, and that made, that made a difference. I know it did, and it just the way we were hearing things and the choices we were making, you know? And I, I think a lot of making great music for me is putting myself in a position to succeed and knowing mm -hmm. I need to get this out of the way and I need to do this. And mm -hmm. so uh, it was it was cool, man. It was an enlightening experience, you know? And I get what you're saying. It's, uh, that very conversation uh, got me started on Only in America. Yeah, you know, it, it is, you know. If, and the guys like us, the guys like us, that stuff really matters, you know. Mm -hmm. It really matters. It, yeah. I can wake up and and just just going out and looking and seeing a cactus and seeing, like, all this stuff and going, <laughs> man, it just makes you think differently. It makes you play differently. It yeah. makes you, you know. And so that was important for me, and I wanted it to feel like that. I think it worked. I mean, Sunshine and Whiskey, good record. <clears throat> um and it has a, you know, has a great attitude. It fit well, you know, work for you. It's a, you know, it's a good, cool song. And the, this, your current single, it yeah, all started with a beer, you know. Um, I see the title. I'm like, I always try and guess what it's about, how the song goes. Didn't go that way. Um, it's, you know, it's, it feels, it feels different. Your delivery feels a little different you know it's a little obviously the song itself is a little more reflective in general but um yeah i get the impression that um you're you are moving down the road a little you know bit. I, I told marshall too i said man i i i know that there's people out there in the world 
that are like me, who need music, who count on music, who rely on music for inspiration. Man, when I was a kid, like I needed it, man. And it would fire me up to go work out for something or go get over a broken heart, you know, somebody broke up, or just to escape into and have fun or just, mm -hmm. I needed it, man. I, I counted on it. I'm like, okay, you know, where's it at? And so now on the other side, I've been given this, this gift to be able to record music and to be a musician for my life. And now that there's people listening to what I'm doing, I, I'm like, Man, I gotta be as good as I can be for these people. I gotta record, I gotta write the best songs I can write. I gotta find and record the best songs I can find. And we gotta knock them out of the park. I gotta try as hard as I can for those people who are counting on it. And they're going, man, I need to, I needed it all started with the beer. I mm -hmm. needed this song to do that. And we have a, I feel the responsibility, you know? And so really all of it was just an effort to, to, be as good as I could be, man, for the people who, who count on the music. Well, sounds like, uh, sounds like you did a good job so far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep chugging, man. Yeah. Keep chugging. Thanks Thank for coming you, in. Thank you. Thank you for coming, man. Thank you for being here.